So uh, one of the things that I, uh, when I was talking to Gary, and we were talking about the black vote, as we always know, as they've said, it is the black vote that takes the election over the top. I mean, that's been a known fact. And right now, I think for the next two years, we're going to have an exciting time because they're going to duke it out. I mean, between the Clintons and Barack Obama and the other candidates are good too. But I think those two already have gotten a show on the road in who is going to try to captivate that black vote. Um, and so we do know that the black vote is real power. It is power on election day for us to get out. It is an opportunity, the one freedom that is most significant where we can bring change. And so that vote, like I said, the black vote is crucial. Again, like I said, I'm thankful uh, for Gary to be here. Um, Gary has impressed me, hopefully. He will have a future, he does have a future in favor of politics or local politics. Gary was born, uh, he grew up uh, in a place where many people never saw past a few days. He lived in the housing projects of the Bronx, educated, living in the housing projects of the Bronx educated Gary as to the hazards of a limited vision, a place where single mothers and missing fathers were to be found in abundance. This environment shaped the person who Gary would someday become. Seeing those things around him, including his father succumb to the ills of the pervasive drug culture, Gary determined that he should never mimic that which he saw. As a child, he began to escape reality by reading and in the process, educating himself in areas not usually taught to children in his circumstances. This educated process, coupled with the fortune, coupled with the fortune he had of having a mother who wanted better for he and his siblings and the one gift his father gave him, the, a love for news and civil rights. These are factors that helped shape Jerry's trajectory in life. Later, Gary and his family would leave the Bronx, move to Long Island, where he would meet his future wife, the love of his life, sitting right here. Um, after high school, Gary would spend several years in the United States Navy nuclear power program before leaving to work for All Storm Power Incorporated. At his 10-year high school reunion, Gary was made aware of the changes that had taken place in his former high school. While this school had served as a safe haven for Gary, a place away from the high schools in the Bronx, it had since it had since his departure become in many ways like those sc schools around. Uh, frustrated at the presence of gangs and drugs, Gary began to search for means to help the students at the school. The search led Gary to find, to find Quest education initiatives. Quest morphed from a company concerned with just youth mentoring to one that currently deals with issues of diversity and minority youth employees, employment skills. In 2003, Gary left the engineering field so that he could return to school and begin to find a means by which he could get involved in the social happenings of his community. This led to a 203 run for office in the local election cycle. While he lost the race, he gained knowledge and a platform by which he had which he and those he intended to serve could be heard. Gary is currently the co-chair of the Connecticut Federation of Black Democratic Clubs. No one may know what the future holds, but whatever it may be, Gary always attempts to remember the words he said himself in a speech he gave, words that drive him forward. Those are, quote, history, that is to be written tomorrow, to be read by our children, to serve as their guide is written in our actions today. A greater call to responsibility I have not known. I present to you, Gary.